Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to a race in the R&D mode, where today we are going to be building our brand new tech for the campaign. Now, in the previous video, we used the new hovers and the new gyroscopes, and honestly, they are pretty darn fantastic. Well, the hover controllers anyway. And today, we are going to be using the brand new wheels. Originally, I was going to use one of the new weapons, but instead... We're going to choose an old favourite I've just never really used enough, the Flymer. The reason is I have found something out about the Flamethrower I didn't know until today, and it sort of makes me look at the weapon in a brand new light, and it's this. Flamethrowers go through shields. They completely ignore shields, which means if we can have enough flamethrowers that we can destroy a block quickly, we can quickly core out enemies, destroy their batteries, their repair bubbles, and just ultimately destroy them utterly. Now, this type of craft would be vulnerable to missiles or cannons from a long range, but if we get close enough and we have enough of these things, we can easily take out the enemy. And I believe the most perfect movement part for this are the new F1 wheels. The reason is they're not only quick, they're incredibly easy to control. Unlike a lot of the other fast wheels, these things can turn incredibly quickly. They don't slide too much, and so we can attack the enemy and then run away if we get into any trouble. At least that's the idea. Now, the two flamers we have are the current flamers we're using and these ones the plasma flamethrowers, and I think those are the only two weapons we're going to be using. So sadly, the newest item in the game are the wheels, and these wheels aren't as new as some of the other items, but don't worry, I have ideas for pretty much every single new item I covered in the recent video. So, just how strong are the plasma flamers? Honestly, I think I prefer the venture purely for range. It means our repair bubbles won't necessarily be hitting the enemy. Oh! The plasma has longer range too, it just has a charge up time. And it's a lot easier to place. Well, ignore everything I just said, we're probably going with pure plasma. Of course, if we have enough of those in the campaign, I'm fairly certain we do. So then, let's get to work building our basic shape. I think since we're using the plasma flamers, I am going to stick mostly to the GSO blocks because they match the weapon and they match the wheels. All that lovely grey. Of course, that will probably change, change in the... You would think at 4am, five hours after trying to get some sleep, you'd be able to avoid phone calls, but apparently I have two friends who are far more nocturnal than me, and decided to call me. Twice. So, like I was trying to say then, before I so rudely interrupted, the plasma flamers will match the colour scheme of the GSO stuff along with the wheels. Now, I'm fairly certain the wheels won't be GSO when they're completed and in the game properly, which means they'll get the colours of, I'm assuming, Venture, but for now we can just pretend they are GSO. A bit of a boring paint scheme, admittedly, but hopefully we can make something which looks okay. Now, I don't want this craft to be utterly tiny. There's the thing. I do want it to have shields, and I do want it to have repair bubbles, because I don't want this to die constantly, especially since experimental weapons are annoying to get, since I can't craft them. So let's just make the base of this craft. In fact, I'm thinking that the core is likely going to just be the Hawkeye ion batteries, since we do have loads of those spare at the moment, and, well, they're pretty space efficient. And they look cool. Let's just be honest, they look cool. So a major change of plan. We are going with a glass cannon. This thing is going to be very, very easy to kill, but should do a lot of damage and should be incredibly quick. So we're going with this. Essentially a framework of these brackets. We're going to use venture batteries going down the spine, and then we're going to have at minimum five flames on the front. I'm probably going to add some more wheels as well. Also, I said front weirdly. Words. How do they work? This looks so weird right now, but it is doing exactly what I want it to do. It's incredibly quick, incredibly easy to control, and the damage is just phenomenal. This is going to hit vital components very, very quickly. It's going to be really powerful versus smaller enemies or enemies with not all that much battery reserve for their repair bubbles. And if we add some more flamers, even repair bubbles probably won't be able to deal with this. The problem is, it's going to die almost instantly, so megaton cannons and above, any missiles and this thing's gonna die, but that's not the point. This is just meant to be on the salt flats, hunting techs, because sometimes you get those missions, go and kill a hundred techs. Well, this thing's gonna be good for that. So that's nice. I'm going to die before the enemy does, but I want to check my damage. Die! Thank you! 
Amazingly, I didn't die first. Okay, I have to keep on going to the side so he doesn't hit me on the way in. Then turn and instant death. Okay, instant death for me as well. Good though. The damage is good. Repair bubble has been added and this is as far back as it can go and still heal everything on the front. This way, we're not healing the enemies we're burning down, so we're not using up all of our own battery power, which won't be very much. This thing will not hold much battery. The idea is very quick battles and then run away. So when it comes to the shield, I'm of two minds. The first idea is to have the shield as far forwards as possible. This way, enemy explosives will hit the shield and won't completely damage everything, which is great. The problem is, the enemy might be within our shield and then their normal weapons will simply ignore it because they're within our shield. If we have it further back, we can still be really close to the enemy, but their weapons won't get through. But I think explosives are far more dangerous. If we are already that close to the enemy, I don't think they're going to, to survive very long. This thing is not going to go up against very large opponents. We could just leave it where it is, it's kind of in the middle. Yeah, let's go with the middle option. This looks so bare bones, and I kind of love that. Just sort of wish the wheels fit the scheme of the other items. Now, again, I'm fairly certain these are going to be Venture when they're fully released, which means they'll get the Venture paint scheme, which would look amazing right now. At least, better than it currently looks. Hello, we're burning you horribly. Oh, look at that. The flame actually sort of deflects and then hits things around it. I should have been using that closer. I have learned things. I am the smart. I'm realizing very quickly, do you know what would make this thing better? These basic missile launchers. It would give us some range capability. It doesn't even look that bad. And they're usable whilst moving quickly. That's the thing. These missiles lock on very quickly. They fire directly up, although you can use other missiles to fire directly up as well. These do it better. Although, now our speed is starting to tank. Anything under 100, I am honestly a little bit worried about, because then why use the F1 wheels? Because they turn so well, Lathrix. Oh yeah, good point. Thanks, Lathrix. Yeah, but look at that. They're perfect for this type of thing. So that does give us some options. But, they would get in the way of the flame damage. I don't think it looks as cool. It kind of defeats the purpose, because sadly, missiles are just that overpowered in this game. So, I'm going to avoid using them. There are plenty of other things we could do, and now we're just over 100. I'm thinking... Jets. That is very quick, and the wheels can actually handle it. Hmm, that lasts quite a while, but now our regular speed is quite nerfed. Ooh, enemies. Ooh, enemies! Let's go. Oh yeah, catch up with me, lads. Maybe better to have more long-term, but they're not quite as quick. I don't know. With this type of craft, it's only going to be used on the salt flats, so we're not going to be using that constantly. Maybe remove these two, keep it with one thrust. Yeah. That's one for one. With only a single thruster. That's alright, but it hasn't nerfed our speed too much. It's only just under 100 now, which we could shave off some weight for. Well, we could go down a very weird route. So, our maximum speed now is only 95 when we're just going forwards. But, we have almost unlimited fuel. Now, sadly, the fuel doesn't regenerate whilst you're using the jet. You can have unlimited amounts of these and only a single jet, and then, well, you'll still run out of fuel. It's why making a jet plane is a little bit annoying in this game, but... That lasts so long, I don't think we're ever going to go this type of distance. So essentially, we're changing our forward speed to 138. But we are going to slow down going backwards and turning and stuff, because now there is way more weight on the back. But I think I can make this look okay, especially if we connect these lower down, and then put these one further down. I think that'll actually look pretty nice, and sort of fill out the craft. Not sure. I do also enjoy, though, this thing going almost 200. This is so less practical, but it looks better, and it's faster, and it's more fun. So, yeah, we're going with the 180 speed. 
It's at this moment I've realized I've made one giant weapon. If this thing gets hit, pretty much anywhere on the back section, it's going to detonate probably stronger than any other weapon in the game. But it's going to be really fun. Okay, so that's definitely breaking the 200 barrier, but now the weight is starting to affect our turning capability. Still not difficult to control though, even at that speed. Did I place that one upside down? How did I manage to do that? It's something I have to ask myself why more often than I should. Everything correct now? Good. The cab is better hidden. Everything's not connected to a single block anymore. Let's see how fast we can kill targets. Really should have charged the weapon up first, and I should let go of that. My keyboard just broke. I'm not even kidding. So, my keyboard is currently stuck with the last command I gave it. Listen. It won't do anything. This is going well. Now that everything's working as intended, let's see if this still is okay. If we can get... Three of these things dead before we die. I will actually consider this a success. Whee! You're dead! Whoa, that worked way better than expected. Problem is, of course, we did sort of trip on the corpse. Corpses are so mean to us. Hello. You're dead. That's three down. With me controlling this really badly. Four down. Now, we're going to try and be smart here. Oh, come on. Now you're dead. Let's charge this up first. Uh, die before we die. Yes. That's the way we do it. Okay, last one then. Since we're definitely going to die here, we have no shields. Never mind. The flamers are awesome. Didn't mean to do that. For some reason, I'm just not able to control my hand at the moment. There we go. Damn, the flamers are amazing in terms of damage. Damn, we are so vulnerable. But yep, this craft is good. In terms of it does what I expected. Hello there. We are now one. I have been rejected. Either way, I do think the craft does exactly what it intended to do. It can do loads of damage incredibly quickly. It's vulnerable, but it's easy to control and incredibly fast. There's nothing more to really add, and it does die in quite a spectacular way, normally separating then detonating, which is cool as well, and rhymes. So, let's get on over back to the campaign and see if we can make this. I'm almost certain we don't have enough flamers or venture batteries. Now before we go back into the campaign, we have this thing. So what I'm doing is just proving to myself that fuel does not indeed regenerate. So, yep, even with all of these fuel tanks, we have two of the tiny thrusters, and as you can see, the fuel is running out. And it's spinny. There we are, out of fuel, boosters turn off, they all start to recharge, they recharge to a point to at least turn the boosters back on, the boosters turn on, eat that fuel, repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, you can still make jets which use boosters, because you can certainly gain a lot more altitude than you lose during those small recharge periods. So then, if I just let this thing recharge for just a few seconds, one, two, three. We then have enough fuel to go on for a very long time. So, either they don't recharge whilst they're on, or they recharge very, 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 very little in comparison to when they're not on. Okay. Just proving my own point there, because I didn't even trust myself. Latherix. The bastion of confidence. Here we are going home with our lovely extremely slow transport and we have the S4 flame car. Yep, I have the imagination of a slightly damp sponge that's been used to get off the grease of a gluten-free meal a few too many times. Either way, the S4 flame car. We need three more plasma throwers, we need two of the venture jets and we need five of the batteries. Honestly, nowhere near as bad as I originally thought, I just let go of shift for no apparent reason. Hello there. So, all we can purchase from here is the flamers, because we're still going with the same rule as before. If we can craft it, we will, excluding the regular basic blocks, because they just take forever, and honestly, they're so easy to craft, it's just a waste of time. Continuing on. 
Looks like we have the resources for absolutely everything, so I'll just go ahead and make those, and then, once again, journeying from trade station to trade station to find the experimental flamers. Batteries are done, and so begins the quest once more, and two straight away. Well, that's pretty lovely. And you know what? I'm going to grab almost everything else you have as well. There we go. No reason for that, but eventually I'm sure I'll be happy with myself for doing that. Maybe. And so we have all the flames we need. Glorious. And now we can go out and test against some real techs. Also, to answer a question I'm getting quite a lot at the moment, why do I not use my planes? You have so many of them, why don't you use them for transport? And the reason is, I just find this way more fun. Like seriously, I find ground travel so much more fun than air travel. I love planes, I love copters and all that, but I love them more for combat. When it comes to moving around, yep, definitely prefer this. It's more fun and more interactive. Very soon, I am going to try and make my own transport vehicle, which is only for transport, no combat capabilities at all. But till then, this thing works. See? Totally worked then. Didn't die or anything. Ooh, salt flats. Perfect. Let's go find some enemies. A little bit early there, mate. You just get missiles to the face. I'm sorry. Every single time I build anything, without fail, I will forget the radar. It's just... It's the way of the universe. But radar installed. Let's go find some enemies. Whee! Oh, there's an enemy over here. Whee! Again. Hello. I have flames. <laughs> God, that's such a fast kill. Okay. One down. Also, how good are flamers at mining? Not exactly something you should really be focusing on, but still. That was fairly quick, although that wasn't the strongest of things either. How about you? Um, okay, but that's quite a lot of flame damage for not the fastest kill in the world. Also, if that's plasma, is it actually a flamethrower? I mean, it's called a plasma flamethrower, and it acts like a flamethrower. But would it be a flamethrower? You're not throwing flames. Throwing flames. You're... That was a really slow kill. And completely derailed my train of thought. You are chucking plasma. You're passing plasma. You're passing plasma. How bad is the climbing with this thing? I can imagine utterly terrible. Oh, slowly. Slowly. Yep, these wheels are not good with their grip when it comes to this type of thing. However, <laughs> we do have boosters, but that caused us quite a lot of damage. Let's get back down here. Ow again. Yeah, this thing is pretty much salt flats exclusive, isn't it? Maybe some grassland. Yet yeah, still hit there. Though to be fair, we could fix that. No, we can't. Never mind. I was going to say by rising up by one, but that's the only connection point. So never mind. That would require some tweaking. We're stuck. Not the salt flats. Look at it go. Hello there. And pop. Thank you. Now, the problem is, if we're a small craft, the odds are we're not going to see any larger craft. So what I might need to do is grab a mission where we have to defend a tech or attack somewhere so that larger things will spawn in. And because apparently I hate myself, I'm going to try and get there using this craft and not swapping out. Okay. Okay, it's working. Really, as well, we could use the larger wheels on the front. You actually can quite easily swap these small ones out for larger ones on this very tech without changing anything. But then it's a little bit more difficult to fire down the side, and honestly, I prefer how this looks. But it is going to make my life a little bit more difficult. Excuse me, nature. You're in the way of progress. Thank you. Okay, not as bad as I first... Ooh, another salt flat. Lovely. Punks, destroy enemy squadron. You know what? I'll just grab all of these. Not you, though. The defend one, I've changed my mind about. Let's go and try and kill the enemy squadron. It's Hawkeye. We're so dead if we do that one. Punks is probably a better bet. We're going to do the cowards thing, and that is this, but only most likely for the first enemy. Because I can just sit here with the flamers fully charged, waiting for this poor thing to spawn in. 
poor thing which happens to have lots of cannons. And is now all melty. And then we do this. Three, two, one. Cowardice! And then we have a look what just spawned. You know what? I'm gonna try and kill them. At some point, I've lost some of these, because normally I can spawn in five of these. Oh, yeah, all the building work back at base. Other things have spawned in, so before we go and kill the Hawkeye, or get killed by the Hawkeye, that was efficient. And we've got a piece of the corpse stuck in our face. Which we're going to burn off. Or not, because we're also healing it. That is a weird sentence. Use that in any other context without the game, and that is very, very bizarre. Hmm. Maybe kill the little guy first. Hello, wheel mouse. Goodbye, wheel mouse. So you definitely have cannons. You, I think I saw missiles, but I'm not certain. Hmm. Current plan is kill Missile Boy first, then kill Cannon Boy. Oh no, there's another wave. I didn't even notice that then. Run, 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 run. Oh no, I think I've lost a Flymer. Honestly, better than expected, though. The flyers do a lot of damage, but what I think I need to do is replace these. I love the idea of having all this front section with brackets. The problem is brackets die so easily. Even if you have them with a shield and repair bubbles, you're going to lose your weapons constantly if they're attached like this. So change the brackets for anything else, like venture blocks, for instance. Fully charged up once again. I don't think that tech in the middle is with Hawkeye. No, it's not. Now, you have shotguns. Okay, now I know who I need to kill first, because shotguns will bounce us around, and since this is a very light tech, I'll end up with our death. Okay, two of you have shotguns. Great, and I just went straight into them. Because why try to go behind the target with shotguns when you can have a shotgun blast in the face instead? Sorry, Tarantula. Did we just win? I was just waffling on. I realised we were... Oh, no, no, no. There are more enemies. Of course there are. They're not too big, though. Um, watch these be the ones who kill us, though. Shotgun! I mean, to be fair, they also ran into our flyers, so maybe I was just being fair. Can't believe we won that, honestly. Even with me being cowardly and charging up every time, I still didn't think that was going to be a win. I thought that was going to be a, well, here are the weaknesses of the craft. I mean, clearly this thing is vulnerable, but yeah, I'm happy with that. Is this a fun craft which I'm going to use from time to time? I am very happy. The only thing is, need to swap out these brackets. They're there because I thought it'd look a bit different. And I do quite like how it all looks. It looks a bit spindly and all sort of just melded together. But that vulnerability is so, so bad. Because even with the shield and the repairable, these things will get knocked out. And then everything's going to fall off. Hello. You appear to be dead. It just so quickly bores through the enemy, and then as soon as it hits something explosive, you've won. Really like the Flyamers. I think if I ever build with the Flyamers again, though, I'm going to build a sort of brawling craft, which can take a few more hits, because this will definitely outdo other melee weapons, if I melee or something in close range in this case. Oh, which isn't exactly melee, but still, fire! I forgot I had no shields. And now to slowly melt your face. So with that, I'm afraid I really am all out of time for today's video. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we are going to continue to build new craft using the new items. I think the next build will most likely either be with the railguns, or the brand new propeller. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. I am happy enough with this craft, which is rare for me, which is nice. Thank you, and goodbye.